So today with 14 other RG speakers, they'll be giving you an opportunity of what it means to be a Muslim and possibly give you a chance, for, a chance for your teachers to see how much you know. During my presentation, I might ask you some questions, and if you have any questions to ask me, feel free. It's okay, guys. So um, first, uh, let me talk about greetings. Muslims everywhere around the world use the same greetings to say hello and goodbye. Assalamu alaikum, which means peace be upon you, and in response to it, say wa alaikum salam, which means peace be upon you too. So can you repeat after me? Say it. You have to slow down. Okay. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. It's good. Does anyone know what language this greeting is in? Arabic. Yeah, that's correct. Um, so the next time you might see a Muslim, try saying this great to them, because they'll respond. Um, next, does, um, does anyone know what the meaning of Islam is? Is it like a country, city, religion, religion? Okay. Um, Islam means peace through submission to God, which implies that one can attain peace by following God's guidance and commandments. Some examples is wearing modest clothing, or like Muslim women wearing veils of feminine hair. It's, okay, Islam is a religion, but a more common and accurate description is a way of life. Um, next, does anyone know what you call someone who follows Islam? Um, yeah. <laughs> you can't say Muslim or Muslim. Oh, so the back there. Um, you say Muslim. 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 Yeah. Um, Muslim is someone who submits to God. A lot of people commonly are confused with the word Islam and Muslim, most likely because they start with different letters, but they both originate from the same Arabic root word, S-L-M, which means peace. So Muslim is pronounced with a soft S, not like the cloth Muslim, which a lot of people <laughs> like to say like that. So do you guys want to repeat after me when I say it? Muslim. Muslim. Good. Okay. A more common definition of Muslim is one who believes in God and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which is stated in the Declaration of Faith, the first commandment, the first, the first pillar, the first of the Okay, now on to Hadia and Adira. Hello, my name is Hadia. Um, I'm 15 years old and I'm a 10th grader at Robinsville Cooper High School. I'm going to talk a little bit about monotheism and the population of Muslims around the world. So, um, does anybody know what monotheism is? One God. Yeah, the belief in one God. So Islam, Christianity, and Judaism are all monotheistic faiths. And these three religions are also considered Abrahamic faiths. This is because all three faiths, um, their history dates back to Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. These, another thing these three religions um, have in common is that they believe in the successive prophets and the revealed scriptures which for Christians is the Bible, for Muslims it's the Quran, and for the Jewish people it's the Torah. So now I'm going to talk about population. Does anybody know how many Muslims um, are in the world? 1.5. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that before that came up. <laughs> so yeah, 1.5 billion, that's, that's about one-fourth of the world's population. So every four people that you meet, one of them, in fact, be Muslim. Now, um, here's a different question. Does anybody know where most of the Muslims are located? <laughs> Which country? Yeah. Africa. <laughs> um, it's Indonesia. So, yeah, most people most people do think it's like in the African area, like Saudi Arabia or Egypt, but it is Indonesia. Um, Indonesia is the first country, then it's Pakistan, and then India. And um, even though like the Quran is written in Arabic, 
that's not the first language to many Muslims. They know how to read it, just um, to read the Quran, but they don't speak it and they don't write it. Like for um, instance, in Indonesia, the main language is Indonesian, and then in Pakistan it's Urdu, and then in India it's Hindu. So um, yeah, like 82% they don't speak or write in Arabic. Nor do they live in Arab countries. And one more important thing to know is that not all Muslims are Arab, and not all Arabs are Muslims. There's um, there's about 10 to 15% of all Arabs are Christian, but they belong to other and my, bro my brother is going to talk about this song in America. Hello, my name is Adil. I am 13 years old and I'm a 7th grader on the Zumbo song. So today I'll talk about the song in America. It is estimated about like one third of slaves who were brought to America were Muslim. And like the it's like a growing rapidly of uh, Muslims in America in, in the world. Does anybody know? I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's about like 120,000 to 150,000 Muslims in Minnesota. There's about uh, 7 million Muslims in the United States. All right, in the late 19th century, like Muslims from all over the world, they started to like come to Minnesota because of like like, not necessarily for the U.S. because of, like, job opportunities, education, and, like, uh, mostly war. Like, my father, he came to the U.S. because of the Russian invasion. And these are, like, American Muslims in the spotlight. These are four Muslims who are, like, famous. Um, Hussein Abdullah, he played for the Minnesota Vikings from 2008 to 2011. He was a practicing Muslim who, uh, he still split played sports even during Ramadan and like Ramadan's were too fast to like from sunrise to sunset for a whole month. Uh, Keith Ellison, he is a US representative from Minnesota. He uh, is Minnesota's fifth congressional district. He's been serving since 2007 and he's the first Muslim to be elected to Congress. I'm sure most of you know Muhammad Ali, the world champion strip boxer. He used to be Christian, but then he converted into Islam. And he's a social activist and a uh, philanthropist. Uh, another person is the Taki Muhammad. That's right there. She wears a headscarf while she is a state professor and she is a two time world champion. in the lives of Muslims. Now, one of the most common, com common causes for misunderstanding is the confusion between the culture of Muslims and the teaching of Islam. Now, each one of us is impacted by many factors, such as race, religion, nationality, country of origin, etc., etc. So, my race is mixed race. My mom is from Europe, and my dad is from Pakistan. My nationality is American. Yeah, America. And my religion is Islam. Now these three factors that I just listed have an impact on people's lives. So, considering the factors above, although I'm culturally American, speak English, eat American food, dress in American clothes that I bought at the American Mall, set fireworks off on the 4th of July, say the Pledge of Allegiance, and occasionally join in chants of USA, <laughs> how, can you, how do you think my religion or ethnicity might affect all these things, how I live my life? Anyone wanna? Come on, guys, <laughs> Arabic than that, but bilingualness, yeah. 
All right, and food, I don't eat pork, but she said, or drink alcohol. Technically, it's illegal for me to drink alcohol since I'm like 15. <laughs> yeah, no underage drinking here, children. Stay in school. But I won't be able to drink alcohol for the rest of my life. So dress, I wear a modest dress, and sometimes I wear ethnic clothing. Look at this, Abaya. So fancy. My dad brought it from Saudi Arabia. And movies, I avoid movies with sexual contact or violence. So no X-rated movies for me. No Fifty Shades movies. of Grey. No, no man, I'm out of that. No. Okay, so other important points would be, not everything that a person does is, in his or her life is motivated by religion. Like I said before, a person's nationality or their race or their country of origin or even their like, political beliefs affect how they live their lives and the decisions that they make. For example, not all Christians are the same.